This year marks the 20th anniversary of the birth of a truly legendary SUV, the last of the real patrols, the Nissan Patrol with the factory index Y61. And, despite the fact that sales of the model in Russia ceased in 2010, although deliveries to some markets continued until 2016, this tank in a tuxedo is still popular and is by no means going to move into the ranks of automotive rarities. Almost any of the owners will readily subscribe to the words of Winston Churchill, this tank has more flaws than I have myself, and almost everyone will say that today they see no alternative to this car. So what makes them love their patrol? And what causes the teeth grinding? Hate number five, yes, it's some kind of dinosaur. Indeed, few of the owners of patrols can boast that a modern, at least by the standards of the first decade of the 21st century, media system is installed in their car. In fact, almost every second review about this car says thrown out the regular music, installed a normal system, Alpine, Blaupunkt, Boston Acoustics, and the 2DIN form factor, with navigation, Bluetooth, rear view camera, amplifier, and subwoofer, well, I invested in soundproofing, and after that life became easier, it became more fun. Yes, in general, few people call noise among the significant shortcomings of the model, but a lot of people write about how much the Shunka cost. Apparently, in the opinion of the owners, in the cabin of such a car, by definition, you cannot feel like in a sound chamber. Plus, such an anachronism has been preserved in the car, such as a telescopic retractable antenna, which is put forward by an electric motor, and you need to use it constantly, wiping it from dirt several times a week and watering it with WD-40. It's the only way to keep it in working order, and an unmovable front fender antenna is a rarity in older patrols. Naturally, the 61st cannot boast of any electronic driver assistance systems, even on the road, even off-road. What to do, this car comes from the days when the trees were big, the sky was blue, and SUVs were iron. Love number five, he was solid, experienced, and gray. There are few people who are ready to consider the Nissan Patrol a model of automotive design worthy of a place in the Museum of Modern Art. That's just the unsuccessful appearance of this car, too, almost no one considers. Patrol is solid, impressive, brutal, and elegant in its own way. But this is not subtle beauty. This is the beauty of function. This is how the lines of the hulls of warships and intercontinental airliners are verified. And the feelings of the owner, they are quite consistent with the appearance. Everyone around is so nimble, probably premium, perhaps very German. And I have a land battleship, I'm a captain, I'm high on my own. By the way, patrol quite like women. Naturally, not many women like to drive this car, it usually seems too masculine to them. But to ride it as a passenger, they are happy to. Indeed, why not look from above, how all the little things around around shy away from the huge crocodile. Hate number four, because someone is eating too much. But you have to pay for everything, including size and solidity. For example, no less solid fuel consumption. However, complaints about exorbitant appetite do not apply to all versions, except that, naturally, consumption is very dependent on driving style. Many note the efficiency of the TD42 diesel. On long hauls with a cruising speed of 110 to 120 kilometers slash H, it consumes about 10 liters per hundred. But the smaller TD28 may ask for 15 liters. There are a lot of conflicting reviews on the net about the consumption of ZD30. Someone writes that it fits into 11 to 12 liters, someone notes that the consumption on the highway is 15 to 17 liters, someone claims that 14 liters per hundred is the consumption in city traffic jams, someone in under the same conditions, 17 to 18 liters are obtained with a calm city ride and about 20 liters in afterburner mode. And of course, multi-liter gasoline sixes eat a lot. Because of this, some multiplying go to the loss of part of the trunk volume and the installation of gas equipment. Gas consumption, of course, is 20% higher than gasoline consumption in the same conditions, and with a quiet ride it is about 16 liters per hundred on the highway and 20 to 22 liters in the city, and when you are in a hurry or standing in dead traffic jams, it can reach up to 30 liters per 100 kilometers. However, gas is much cheaper. 
Love number four, like behind a stone wall. Many owners write that patrol should not be bought with the last money. The maintenance of such a car inevitably costs a pretty penny. But many people willingly go for these expenses since there are not many cars that inspire the same sense of security. And there are very real reasons for this feeling. Patrol is ready to protect the crew even in the event of very severe accidents. Here, for example, is the story of the owner. In the summer of 2009, on the Moscow Riga Highway, I stopped the car on the side of the road, and a road train weighing 61 tons entered me from all over, 100 kilometers per hour, according to the traffic police. The car is written off, but I only have a broken neck and two broken ribs. He got out of the cab himself. The only thing was that a traffic police officer helped to open the door. In general, think for yourself, decide for yourself. It is clear that today no technology can give a 100% guarantee of survival in, for example, a head-on collision at high speeds. But in the mass of life situations, a powerful frame, overall weight, and a strong body, naturally, in combination with belts and pillows, significantly reduce the risk of serious consequences. Hate number three, that's when the spine got enough sleep. As far as the owners are unanimous in assessing the safety of the 61st, they are just as unanimous in their stiff suspension, and also the fact that, despite the presence of a standard steering damper, bumps are transmitted to the driver's hands. In the Far East, they say, if you want your spine to fall into your pants after traveling on a dirt road, and if you want a car, at least by a safari, if you want to drive in comfort, choose Cruzac. Or here is another quote, on the go, the car, as I said, is tough, it catches the slightest bumps. I thought the shock absorbers did not work or the stabilizer links burst, but know that the patrol is like that in life. Of course, you can lower the tire pressure, but then the handling is different. The patrol community has considered a variety of ways to level this shortcoming, from the mentioned pressure reduction to the selection of softer rubber, shock absorbers, and suspension springs, but all of them only reduce the scale of the disaster without changing the character of the car in a radical way. To prevent kickback, many people prefer to install a more powerful steering damper, such as Old Man Emu or Iron Man. There is such a position in the catalog of a completely domestic company RIF. And a rigid suspension is somewhat similar to beer in the morning. It is not only harmful, but also useful. Firstly, the patrol's behavior on a bad road fits perfectly into the old formula of more gas, less holes. And secondly, the Y61 has no tendency to change the trajectory of movement on bumps. And this behavior on poor surfaces is very well suited for an expedition vehicle. Love number three, I carry everything with me. What is especially important for the expeditionary? Naturally, the internal volume and size of the luggage compartment. In the case of Patrol Y61, all this is in full accordance with the impressive external dimensions. And here, perhaps, the direct speech of the owners will be most convincing. I didn't carry everything on it, starting from lining and ending with cement, 20 bags at a time, places in it are like on the deck of an aircraft carrier there is a lot of space in the back seat when we held ice competitions races and mind patrol stage the judging so the secretary sat there with a laptop and a printer and the participants sat next to him and filled out applications for participation and everyone was comfortable we went to Abkhazia for people plus a full load we slept right in the car there is no tunnel, so the average passenger in the back sofa gets the same comfort as those sitting on the edges, including a two-point seat belt. In the seven-seater version, a small trunk curtain is provided. If the third row seats are removed as unnecessary, then it is desirable to purchase the original full-size curtain that fits into its native places. When I first sat behind the wheel of the Nissan Patrol, I was struck by the huge interior space and its convenience. If in my old cars, I reached the passenger door and could open and close it on the go, here I can't even adjust the right air duct. A real refrigerator is installed between the driver and passenger seats, comma huge luggage space, the ability to transport lengths up to 2.8 meters in the cabin and the easy movement of five winter anglers along with all the ammunition over a distance of 200 kilometers in two hours with the task of getting to the ice is not every vehicle. By the way, 
the most utilitarian versions of the patrol, they are often called UN-1s because they really were popular with all kinds of international monitoring organizations, have nine seats, on the sides of the trunk there are folding double benches, the passengers of which sit facing each other. Hate number two, demand climate asylum. Huge salon, it seems to be good. But from the point of view of microclimate regulation, the larger the interior, the more problems. The owners of far from all versions complain about the cold in the Nissan patrol cabin, but there are still enough dissatisfied people. Owners of versions that do not have an additional rear seat heater are especially categorical. And the interior warms up for quite a long time, and in winter, in traffic jams, the engine cools down instead of overheating and it becomes cold again in the car. There are problems with starting the engine in winter, especially if the temperature drops below minus 25 degrees. Naturally, this applies mainly to diesel versions. Neither replacing the thermostat nor wrapping helps. Installing an autonomous starting heater to some extent solves this problem, but here are typical cries of the soul. After installing Eberspacher, it began to warm up better, but still in the cabin like in my refrigerator. The stove does not have time to warm up the interior. At engine operating temperature, it's still cold. For a 3.0 TD motor, this is a standard problem, since this motor is complete junk. It doesn't get warm in winter, it overheats in summer. In winter, at minus 25, a 3 liter diesel engine doesn't start by itself, so it's better to install Webasto or Eberspecker right away. After 10 minutes of autonomous operation, it starts up with a half turn. And up to minus 25 it starts up normally. The Spartan features of the past are expressed in the absence of a rear air conditioner. There is a true rear stove, but not in all machines. This breeze blows only from the rear on the right and is effective only when the air in the cabin has already warmed up. At the same time, in essence, patrol feels very good in winter conditions. Due to the weight, it holds the trajectory well on snowy roads, however, for this it is better to connect the front axle and get that very predictability at the cost of understeer, and to plant the Y61 in the snow, you need to have a depth almost up to the hood. The car accelerates well on a winter road, but it slows down badly, and often dangerously badly, but snow drifts and snowy parapets, in which a light SUV pops up and skids, drives confidently like a tank. Love number two. Tanks are not afraid of dirt. As a matter of fact, the cross-country ability of all Nissan patrols has long become a legend, and almost all owners single it out as one of the main advantages. Many write that the purchase of this car literally rediscovered the world around them. It turns out that there are so many beautiful places around, even in the winter forest, even on a distant lake. True, from legend to myth is only one step. Passability patrol has its limits, and these limits are set primarily by the solid weight of the car. But if you have already buried yourself or put the car on bridges, then unwind the winch. No winch? Then go get the tractor. And if, having believed in the limitless possibilities of the car, you foolishly climb into the swamp, then the tractor may turn out to be powerless. In fact, the patency of the patrol Y61 in its standard configuration can be assessed as average, especially on soft soils. For real off-road, the car needs to be lifted, put normal mud wheels at least 33 or 35 inches, change the springs, the main pairs and the bridges, so that it all goes, well, then replacing the bumpers, installing a winch and away we go. But on the primer or on dry off-road, the car feels more than confident. The opening mechanism of the rear axle stabilizer and the presence of a rear axle lock are very helpful. But even here it must be borne in mind that the traction and other steering components are located in front of the front axle and are not protected by anything. The exhaust system often suffers too the bank of the rear muffler hangs below the frame, so it's quite easy to damage it on stones or other hard obstacles. Nevertheless, the long wheelbase patrol Y61 is an excellent platform for building a car for long-distance extreme travel. In principle, this car also has many sports victories in extreme off-road competitions, such as the Rainforest Challenge and Outback Challenge. 
But there, the athletes used a GU flatbed truck with a single row cab as a base for building sports equipment. This immediately solves the problem of excess weight. But the problems of a 3 liter diesel engine have not been fully resolved. Hate number one, three liters of problems. Yes, the ZD30 diesel really can be called unsuccessful, so unsuccessful that everyone unanimously recommends staying away from cars with such an engine manufactured before 2004. And, nevertheless, it is this motor that is under the hood of more than 70% of the patrol cars sold in Russia. When this diesel first appeared on the market, the automotive press was filled with enthusiasm for its power, elasticity, and low noise. But they subsided very quickly, and the company had to conduct a recall campaign related to malfunctions in the cooling system and burnout of the pistons. Another standard ZD30 problem is related to the hydraulic poly V-belt tensioner, which drives all attachments of this motor. A lot of trouble can be caused by water getting into diesel fuel. The electronic components inside the pump are not protected by anything, since, in theory, they should work when completely immersed in diesel fuel. Water is like death to them, and they don't like low temperatures. Here, for example, is the real conclusion about the ZD30 that got stuck and required a complete overhaul. The engine damage on the car was due to the crankshaft oil seal being squeezed out. The reason could be the low ambient temperature. When the engine is running at such temperatures, condensate forms in the tubes that discharge crankcase gases and, as a result, they freeze. Moreover, freezing is possible both at idle engine operation, when it cannot warm up sufficiently, and when driving along the highway at high speed, when rapid cooling occurs. The pipes froze, crankcase gases squeezed out the crankshaft oil seal, oil leaked from the engine, the liners overheated and the connecting rod was welded to the crankshaft, the engine jammed. And this is by no means an isolated case. However, the TD28 also cannot be called a trouble-free unit. Its main diseases are considered to be cracking of the cylinder head, as well as a relatively weak injection pump, which requires a bulkhead after 300,000. The high-pressure fuel pump, however, is maintainable, but there are not so many places where it can be correctly sorted out. The cost of dismantling, assembling, and adjusting the high-pressure fuel pump at the stand is $300 to $325, but you may need spare parts worth up to. 2000 however a new high pressure fuel pump assembly costs five thousand five hundred and ninety two dollars so many old cars do not start very well they smoke but they drive the same applies to the turbine as a rule she nurses from 300 to 400 thousand moreover unlike other cars it can drive oil with might and main but this will not be an indicator of its death in this state, the turbine can last for 100,000 or even more. But you need to understand that death can come at any moment. At disassembly, the turbine costs about $400, repairs with the replacement of the cartridge about 700 to 800. A new turbine will cost more than $1,400. The manual box also delivers certain inconveniences. It has very short lower gears. Both in first and in second gear, the motor instantly spins up to the red zone. As a result, when driving in the city, you have to constantly wield the gear lever, which also differs in moves, like a truck. They take care of the checkpoints for a maximum of 300,000 kilometers, but they work to the last and for a long time they suggest that they are going to go to the upper boxes. Synchronizers begin to crackle, some gears fly out, but in this form the box can go another 100,000, and only upon opening it is found that 90% of the parts have long been in the dumpster. Love number one, tolerate whatever the Lord sends. So what happens, that very endurance and reliability of the Nissan Patrol, which the voice of the people puts in the first place in the list of virtues, should also be transferred from the category of legends to myths. After all, the car, in addition to the already mentioned problem areas, has a whole set of hereditary sores. For example, the anti-roll bars go for a maximum of 40,000. The front brake discs do not live too long, and many complain that they have to be changed almost every change of pads. Patrol doesn't slow down too well at all, especially on slippery surfaces, and a lot of people write about the readiness of the car to go to the ram. 
After a run of about 300,000 kilometers, the steering gearbox starts to flow. Both the bulkhead in good service and the gearbox from disassembly cost $400 each. Depending on the features of operation and storage of the machine, the frame rots at one speed or another. The first sign of developing corrosion of the skeleton is a rotting VIN. The number is stamped on the right side member of the frame, in the area of the bend at the front fender, you need to look at it from under the hood. And it often happens that a person comes to the traffic police, but there is no license plate. These problems are especially typical for Emirati cars, since other materials were used in their construction. This is evidenced by the fact that, with an absolute external similarity, their spare parts have different catalog numbers. With the Arabs in general, you need to be careful. There are no fatal problems with them, but the thermostats here are different, and the pipes going to the rear air conditioner are guaranteed to rot in a couple of years. Often the wiring going to the rear lighting equipment rots. The rear wiper turns sour, although the motor, as a rule, does not burn out. And after such a list, how can one talk about some kind of super reliability? But the fact of the matter is that there are grounds for such conversations. Firstly, in the engine lineup there is such a wonderful unit as the TD42, which has no problems with either candles or the block head. All systems of this diesel engine are also duplicated. The TD42 has a very powerful electrician, neither starters nor generators fly at them, and the wiring does not rot. The electrical systems of the TD-42 continue to work even after several days of sitting in the swamp wipers. Secondly, for many SUVs with dependent suspension, the front axle is one of the most problematic nodes. But patrol is not one of them. At most, with a run of 150 to 200,000 kilometers, the pivot bearings are guaranteed to fail, but the bridge never runs less than 150,000. The rear axle is so uninteresting that there is nothing to say about it. Half shafts and main pairs almost never fail. And this also applies to cars participating in extreme off-road competitions. That's just the legendary endurance and reliability of the Nissan Patrol can play a trick on the buyer. The fact is that Patrol for a very long time can forgive an absolutely disregard attitude. It will grunt, buzz, puff, spit smoke, tap with a broken down suspension but go as a result acquiring a car which at first glance is a completely self-propelled vehicle a person after a while finds out that he actually acquired three tons of headaches and it was in his hands that the car finally reached the limit of its endurance but one way or another the patrol y61 was and remains the car in which you can wave away on vacation to the south let's say from siberia and at the same time expect that the vacation will not be spoiled, but some problems, if they will begin to appear, it will be possible to solve upon return. But if some major breakdown does happen, then patrol is good because you can repair it yourself and in the field. Even a clutch replacement can be done without a hole. For example, one of the participants of the Moscow Magadan Moscow expedition once covered 21,000 kilometers in a month, of which he drove 2,000 kilometers with a bridge lying on the bumpers due to broken front springs. But most importantly, this car catches something in your soul and remains in your memory for life. And here's what's interesting, among the owners of this, it would seem, to the limit of a rational and practical car, there are a lot of romantics. And let me finish by quoting one of them, are there any better machines? No doubt there is. However, no car gives such a feeling of reliability and indestructibility. In any case, you will never regret that you had patrol. It really is. And it's not that it's impossible to sell it. Can. With your mind, you understand that it is difficult to find a more adequate transport in terms of costs, consumer practical properties, reliability, and safety. Patrol really gives faith in solid ground under your feet and wheels. This is a very unusual feeling. I do not know if I will part with this device. Probably only if life squeezes. But the fact that I will never regret that I had it is 200% sure. Well, the existing complaints, they say, that the car looks like a collective farm, and it can't be found in its dynamics, 
and in general it's a tractor with a leather interior due to the fact that people simply made a mistake when choosing a car and purchased a vehicle that does not correspond to their image life.